What was happening in 1978? The first cell phone was introduced in Illinois. The movies Grease and Close Encounters of the Third Kind hit theaters nationwide. Gas was 63 cents, and the average cost of a home was $55,000. Times were fairly good across the country, until one storm affected one area of the country and changed the tranquility of towns, cities, and states. New England experienced its own Bermuda Triangle. From Springfield, Massachusetts, down to Connecticut, then Rhode Island, back up to Cape Cod, then shooting north, the grandfather of all storms made his grand entrance. For as long as we've known, we've had four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Spring, the beautiful flowers and the endless variety catch the eyes of many. Summer, a season loaded with cookouts, along with the company of good friends and family, and of course, time is set aside enjoying some body of water. Fall, it should be longer, like take the place of winter. None can deny the amazing colorful leaves, the fresh, crisp air, and the most breathtaking scenery one could see. And then there's winter. When my mother mentions the blizzard of 78, she always ends the conversation with, you were born in a storm. Why? How? Interestingly enough, the blizzard was forecast several days earlier. In total, the blizzard lasted 36 hours. For about 15 of the 36-hour winter nightmare, the blizzard forced hurricane winds to freeze anything and everything during the night. Electrocution. The impact of the snow and the rate at which it fell per hour forced power lines to collapse leaving those who had to walk through the high snow vulnerable. Car accidents. Many commuters froze to death, stranded and trapped in their vehicles, while others died from carbon monoxide poisoning as a result of having clogged tailpipes. Heart attacks. Having to shovel overwhelming amounts of snow Trudging through the heavy snow and the strenuous endurance required caused the loss of life. Drowning. And then there were those who sacrificed their own lives to save another, even if it meant being stranded at sea. A fascinating book by author Michael Tugis titled Ten Hours Until Dawn, he quotes William Faulkner who said, I believe that man will not only endure, he will prevail, because he has a soul 
and a spirit capable of compassion and sacrifice. To the men on board the Can Do, Frank E. Quirk II, Charles Bucko, Kenneth Fuller Jr., Norman David Curley, and Donald Wilkinson, thank you for showing a true example of bravery. And to the U.S. Coast Guard, we thank you for all you do, have done, and continue to do, which is save lives, a great act of humanity. The blizzard wreaked havoc across the states. It was labeled a Category 5 storm. 54 lost their lives in Massachusetts, 21 people in Rhode Island. One loss of life is too many. Zero loss of life would have been fair. The blizzard was most known for its coastal damage to New England. Though Long Island, Albany, New York, and even the Green Mountains of Vermont, many of whom reported well over two feet of snow, had fallen that Monday, the 6th of February, and continued into Tuesday. Was there hope? The sheer terror of snowbound cars that looked like iceboxes. A winter ban had to go into effect to prevent further loss of life. Pulitzer Prize winning photographer Kevin Cole captured abandoned vehicles with no passengers, or appeared to be empty. However, as data showed, many never made it out of their vehicle alive. Mother Nature was playing a game and there was no winner in sight. Springfield, Mass., which sits inland from the coast, still dealt with the major impact of a bombardment of snow. Help was certainly needed in towns across Massachusetts and others. The National Guard flew into areas to drop off critical supplies for newly crippled areas. And it was not hard to miss. In some areas like Providence, Rhode Island, New Bedford, in Fall River, Massachusetts, were left a ghost town. Empty cars everywhere. Was an end to the nightmare ahead? It didn't seem so. Whether it be in rain, sleet, or snow, or a blizzard that brings 90 mile per hour winds and single digit temperatures, as brave as they were, mailmen were not left untouched. It almost seems unimaginable to leave one's own vehicle, but Mother Nature forced that option. as seen on this stretch of road on Route 128 in Dedham, Massachusetts. Searching on foot for the nearest home was one's means of survival. Some walked to the closest hotel and waited several days before the coast was clear, while others waited in their vehicles for plow trucks to rescue them, others had to take their chances. Even though walking on any road or highway wasn't safe and against the law, in that moment, there was an unwritten exception.
Not only were supplies dropped off to those in need and those critically injured, but military equipment was even used to disperse an exhaustive amount of heavy snow and ice. Damage and death is what coastal New Englanders had to deal with. High tides again crippled coastlines, as seen here from Minnow's Light off the coast of Situate. Hurricane winds from Boston to Chatham were in excess of 85 miles per hour. The blizzard, which was known as Storm Larry, was headed home. The intense visit was more than what New Englanders had bargained for. Since the grandfather of all storms came from the Northeast, it meant the power of the storm was felt most and hard in Massachusetts. Cape Cod, Revere, Winthrop, and several other coastal areas needed all the help they could get. The National Guard, the U.S. Air Force, the Coast Guard assisted in rescue efforts. Most local police, even firemen, and your neighborhood Good Samaritan could be seen in boats, rescuing the elderly and those trapped in three feet high of freezing water. Over 9,500 people had to be evacuated, most of whom had nowhere to go. Homes were completely destroyed. Large boulders, small rocks, and mountains of sand were carried ashore by heavy winds that penetrated and obliterated people's livelihood. Over 4,500 cars were abandoned that dreadful week in February. Over 2,000 homes completely gone. Thousands of New Englanders were living in temporary shelter, and a majority of casualties occurred on the coast. The blizzard of 78 broke records. It was noted to be an extratropical cyclone, a storm that reaches in its bag of weather tricks and mixes the right temperature and dew point, and from it produces a weather-changing nightmare. The tipping point of devastation had reached its end by midweek. The aftermath from the blizzard of 78 left thousands, young and old, shocked, baffled, and bewildered. This catastrophic and historic nor'easter took lives and material possessions with it. Homes that once stood complete were now in ruins. Estimates based on today's dollar bring the destruction total to close to $3 billion. Although people's hearts might have been weak, the mind was strong. And there was a firm resolve for New Englanders to clean up the mess. Then, Governor Michael Dukakis had the assistance of federal troops to lend aid, and the government assistance answered the call of help. Former Boston Mayor White can be seen thanking the National Guard for their enormous help. Although the affliction from the storm can be seen on people's faces, a big heart and a strong resolve was what allowed many states affected to eventually get out from the nightmare. 
A great deal of compassion was displayed that week and the weeks that followed. State authorities in Massachusetts acknowledged it would take several days before streets and highways were back to normal. Logan Airport stayed open for emergency medical supplies and any emergency airlifting that needed attention. Waves of food and military folks arrived to the state to help with the cleanup process. Streets and highways that disappeared in the storm and were impassable were now becoming visible. Cargo planes came into Logan Airport to assist in the massive cleanup effort. Folks started to venture out again. New Englanders were ready to get back to the hustle and bustle of life. A sigh of relief was at hand. Although many were on foot, thousands were grateful that the blizzard had vanished. Unfortunately, one couldn't say without a trace. The blizzard stores up powerful memories for many. So many people knew exactly where they were that week. young and old alike. One thing that stands out most notably was the inherent desire to show compassion. Many stories contain fond memories. At a distance, seeing smiling faces and a little laughter one would question someone's sanity after enduring a storm such as the Great Blizzard of 78. But those smiling faces and a determination kept spirits high. In the face of disasters, one question remains. How does one overcome adversity when everything you own and see around you becomes rubble? All you can do is pick up the past. Life circumstances, whether negative or positive, transcends us to a point of awareness. An awareness that no matter what we experience, it will shape or give you an inkling of what you need to change about yourself. Every journey we travel might look the same, but they are drastically different. We all are capable of helping and creating and shaping society. Although voices from the past may not speak to us at present, we live where they left off. Whether it be a natural disaster or some untimely event, your voice and your thought will get you through your personal storm. Live and love life. Never forget the blizzard of 78.